Good morning and welcome to Authentic Conversations Emoji. It's been quite a number of days um, with all the Black Lives Matter and all kinds of stuff. It's been a crazy, crazy time in the world. Hope all is well. We're just going to wait for people to join us and then we can take it from there. It's Monday again. Oh my God. Time is so, so, so quick. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Popos, all is well with everybody. Let me get my glasses because I can't really see. Good morning, guys, and welcome again. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a while, long time no see, but I had to take a breather and just take a step back. But welcome to the studio, and give me a second. I'll be right back. If you're on here, I need to see your name. So please say hello in the comment area. And if you're on my public page, I will not be see, able to see your text, so I won't be able to answer you. Do me a favor and share this this um, this video. It's a very very important one to me. It's very heavy, and I know that some of some other people need to come in and chit chat and let's talk about things that are serious. Let's start to have authentic conversations so we can change. The world, really, one person at a time. So, um, who's on there? Say good morning so I can see you. I'm ready. I am so ready. I did research all week. Originally, I was going to come on here and talk about, you know, side chicks and things like that. But with so many deaths um, around me personally and so many uh, funerals on Zoom, it's just been crazy. I just, I didn't think it was anything important to talk about. As And as you guys know, I speak power into truth with a very unique voice. So I could not do a show that was just so frivolous. Like um, there wasn't anything to really laugh about, honestly, even though I try and bring comedy into everything I do. Anyways, today I decided to talk about boundaries, boundaries and choices, boundaries and choices. It kept haunting me all week. Last week, boundaries and choices, because I look at things happening in the world and it's boundaries and choices, boundaries and choices. Why do I keep talking about boundaries and choices? See, the choices we make today is bound to have an effect on our lives down the line. If you choose to eat unhealthy today, in a month or so, you would have gained weight. If you choose to go to school, you in 10 years from now, you'll be, you'll be, hopefully live in a comfortable life if you choose to do the work today if you choose to become educated family you know familiarize yourself with history familiarize yourself become familiar with things that happened in the past so you know it once you know where you're coming from then i believe i personally believe you'll be able to see a little bit into the future and nobody nothing we're doing in this world is really original nothing Everything is an innovation. Somebody comes up with an idea and you throw the idea on the table and somebody makes it better. You know, the shirt I'm wearing today was did not start off being a shirt designed like this. I heard when I did research that it was T-shirts that were originally made and then men wanted shirts that made them look professional to go out and then they created polo shirts. Polo shirts are shirts, T-shirts with collars. That's pretty much all it is. So they can throw their jackets on and at night or evening after work, they can take it off. It's called innovation. There's nothing really truly new under the sun, but the only thing that has stayed the same has been people that make the right choices and nobody's perfect. We all do not make the right choices. Oh my God, I have failed at so many things, but failing is not the issue. Failing and learning from your mistake is the issue. We continuously, a lot of us, you, me, and a lot of my friends, we keep making choices and think things are going to be different. I was talking to a friend of mine last week and she goes, oh, you know, I keep meeting all these crazy men. She's Nigerian, Yoruba. She said, oh, these weary men, all these crazy men. I've dated this one and he did this and I've dated that one and he did this and I dated that one and he did that. So I said to her, wait, 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 how come all these men are the ones doing the same things? Why are all, all these men cheating on you? You, this one person, there's six, six, how many billions and billions of people in the world, but you keep dating the same person in the same body. 
I'm a certified life coach, in case you don't know. I had to go get training because I use my experiences, but I needed, you know, formal training to be able to know how to talk to people and deal with people. So I'm a certified life coach, and a lot of my friends call me for advice and things like that. I'm not the one to call if you're looking for somebody to just hold your hands and say, it's okay, don't worry, it's not your fault. My job, and I've always been that way, and that's how I became who I am, I would look at a situation. And I'll be able to diagnose it and say, hey, this is what I emoji did wrong. This is what I could have done differently. Because how do you learn? You only learn if you do the right things. You only learn if you are being progressive and proactive, not always reactive. All this Black Lives Matter thing is really driven me crazy. Drove me crazy. Why? Drove me crazy because a personal friend of my wife's was, was shot to death. While people are saying, burn shit, burn this, burn that, burn this. Personal friend, not somebody we know that we that knows somebody that we know that knows something. No, a friend of my wife's that she's known for many, many years, 70-something-year-old man that was a retired fireman, black American man, was shot to death. Trying to, you know, help a friend of his whose black-owned shop was about to be burnt down in St. Louis. And one of those people burning things down shot him to death. So when people are jumping up and down and talking about, yeah, let's burn this shit down, let's burn this shit down, I'm sorry, I cannot be on the same bandwagon with you because I know better. I know people that have been hurt. I know people that have died. And you know, what I find is that the people that are burning shit down, the white people burning shit down, they're not in your neighborhood, they're not in the black people neighborhood, they're gonna go back to their neighborhoods. And then the black people that are burning things down, they're not actually, they don't have anything to own. They've never owned anything. They've never worked for anything. So a black man that has worked all his life, saved up all his pennies to open up a shop and the shop gets burned down. You are trying to tell me his life doesn't matter. Black lives matter. All black lives matter. All black lives. Black women's lives matters because in this situation, nobody's even talking about all the black women that have been killed. Nobody's talking about the transgenders that have been killed. Nobody's talking about the gay people that are being slaughtered in America by black Americans or black people in general. Nigeria is burning black people down nobody's talking about it all black li all black lives matter choices and boundaries that's the topic today i've been very quiet lately you know i've been very i've gone back deep inside me and i said let's talk about choices because people will come after me there's a story of a nigerian girl 19 year old nigerian girl that was brought to me over the weekend because they couldn't find her you know they couldn't find this girl because she disappeared. Now, look, she's Nigerian, she's Yoruba. So of course I went looking for more information. Choices and boundaries. Let's start with the choices, okay? She chose to leave her home and move into a shelter, according to the story I heard, allegedly. Now she's, she's in a church where she was giving shelter, but I guess the church wasn't nice enough and she's an activist. So she goes out, choices again. She goes, this Nigerian girl goes out. Her name is Oluwa Tosi. So she goes out and she does the Black Lives Matter march, which is fantastic. Oh, I have no beef with that. That's absolutely wonderful. And she put to her, very proud of her. And then she goes, she meets a man that she's never met, choices, and decides to be the man, a black man. I don't know if it's a black American or a black Nigerian, but Oluwa Tony is a black Nigerian, of course, woman. So Tony decides to go home with this um man that she's never met, doesn't know anything about, but she met him at the at rally. And because the guy spoke the magic words to most Nigerian, if the devil comes down today and talks about Jesus Christ and he tells you all will be well, most Nigerian women will be like, oh, he's a saint. As far as I'm concerned, because I don't see Pepe, my eyes are seeing Shege. Okay, Nigerian churches have shown me Pepe. So for me, just because you say you're a Christian does not mean that you're Christ-like. So this young woman, Tony, 19-year-old, young, beautiful Nigerian girl, decides to go home with a person that she believes is a, a black American man, that she believes is a godly person. All right? Let me just say black man, because I don't know if he's American or Nigerian. Bottom line is that she goes home with a Nigerian man, or the black man, I repeat. She goes home with a black man to his house, a man she has never met before. Hello, Falashadi. A man she has never, ever met before. She decides to go home with a Nigerian man. The Nigerian man allegedly gives her clothing to, his clothing to wear, and which is great. 
And then he goes to the bathroom and pees with the door open so she can see him. Then she goes to his bedroom. You've never met a man in your life. Okay? Never, ever met a man in your life. Okay? Olua Tony is what I have on, on, on Kini. On, um, you said her name is Olua Tosi, but I have it here as Olua Tony, and I'm working off of her page on Twitter. So she goes into the guy's house. She didn't sleep on the couch, boundaries and choices. That's because it breaks my heart. My oldest daughter is 30 years old. My younger one is 25. This girl is 19. A 19 year old child has been killed, has been murdered, and we have no idea of anything yet. And she's Nigerian. So my heart is totally, totally, totally broken. This is so crazy because you go to a man's house because he told you he's a godly person. So you go to his house. You don't sleep on the couch in public because the guy has a friend, a roommate. According to the story that I gathered so far, the man has a roommate, but you don't choose to sleep on the couch. Oh. You choose to go and sleep in his bed. A man you've never met. Choices. Follow me on this one. Oh. So then she goes... She, she said, he came disguised as a man of God and ended up picking me up from ni nearby whatever street. She entered his truck because she did not have anything to defend herself, not even a phone, right? No problem. So you left your phone while you go to march in the church, but you choose to go home with a man that you've never met, a black man that you've never met. I have to be specific about the race because it's very important when we say black lives matter to understand that all lives, all black lives matter, right? Choices and boundaries. That's a topic. Choices and boundaries. So, um, Fola Shade allegedly, according to her Twitter story, to, to the stuff I read on Twitter and different blogs and different newspapers, Olua Tony now goes home with a guy, takes a shower in this guy's house, a guy she's never met, and then she changes into his clothing and then proceeded to, lay, to go and sleep in his bed. Usually when you go someplace that you don't know the people, the guy has a roommate, so at least if you sleep on the couch, nobody's, if anything happens, you can scream and the guy won't, the roommate might hear you or whatnot. But she made a choice to go sleep in his bed. Nobody deserves to die. I only bring up this story so that people can learn from it. Because the worst thing in the world is that you should always try and learn somebody, something from somebody else's situation so you don't have to go through it. Life lessons don't come cheap while life. I am a good example of that. I have made so many, many choices in my life that has led me down the wrong path. And I've made some choices that have led me to the right path. But the key to life is not being the one that's taking the classes yourself, is learning from what's around you. Because feminists will come on here and tell me, oh, Moji, what you did was wrong. Been blaming the victim. I'm not blaming the victim. I want us all to learn something. Share the video because your friends have to hear this. It's not everybody that says they're a man of God that's a man of God. Because somebody says, oh, I'm a Christian, does not mean he's, he's Christ-like. I did a show on Christianity and religion last week and everybody went nuts. Okay? We did, remember we did it, Olala Day, we did a show on last week about this and they were all upset. I mean, you're, from day one, your parents tell you don't talk to strangers. I know because of social media. You meet somebody on social media these days. After six months, you think you know them. Look at Hush Poppy. Look at Hush Poppy flaunting money, flaunting clothing, flaunting this every day on social media. And nobody ever bothered to ask, what does he do for work? What does this person do for work? If you look me up, Google my name, you'll see my jobs. You'll see the businesses I've done. You've seen a lot of things about me. So when you have people that you don't, they don't have receipts, you need to start asking. Oluwa Tonyi, this young girl, decides to go home with this black person, with this black man, because he said he was a godly person. He took her home. And then she went, she, he offered her a shower. And she said, I thanked him and the shower. And he gave me a change of clothing. So he gave her his clothing. She put to him. He did right. And then he exposed himself to me by peeing with the bathroom door open, obviously knowing I was out of it. Now, my question is, why was she out of it? We have to start to ask ourselves questions. You have to ask solid questions. What she said, obviously knowing that she was out of it, which could mean she's tired. But if you're that tired to the point where somebody is exposing themselves to you and you're going on with somebody you don't know, then you've got, there's a problem here. We have to do better as women. We have to be more proactive and start protecting ourselves. And people 
come after me and say nobody deserves to be raped no nobody deserves to be raped nobody deserves to be killed but we should stop putting ourselves into situations where we are making it easier for ourselves to be raped where we are putting ourselves in danger in danger in danger why would you go home with somebody some man you don't know why would you change into his clothing a guy you don't know yes he might have been jesus christ but honey since I read the, that somewhere that 50% of women all over the world have been allegedly either molested or sexually abused, I'm sorry, I'm not ever putting myself on my mm -mm, in a situation where I have to say, oh God, I wish I had. I'd rather not make that friend today and get to know the friend than have to go through a life of regret. This girl is dead. She's 19 years old and her life has been snuffed out. Snuffed out. So the, uh, allegedly, I'm reading the story from her tweet. So she's the one tweeting all these things before she was murdered. So allegedly, she's in this guy's bed. And the guy comes into the house, into the bedroom, and lays on top of her after he offered to give her a massage. A man is laying on top of you. I'm sorry. What point is that acceptable in the universe where a man is laying on top of you, a man you don't know, you don't have any relations with, you don't have any intentions of sleeping with, you don't have any intentions of becoming very... Um, intimate with is laying on you and you don't push him off and get your clothing and run the hell out we have to become more uh, proactive choices people choices choices you know choices so the guy lays on her and allegedly he discharges on her and then she while she was laying on her stomach trying to calm herself down and all that which i get and then she picks up her clothing and runs out the door. She didn't call the police or she called the police. I don't remember, but whatever the case is, then she went missing. And two days later, she was found dead. Dead. See, the way I broke down the story, people are going to come after me and say, hey, how dare you? Why are you blaming the victim? I'm not blaming the victim. I want other women out there to learn life lessons. See, we have taken down so much of our boundaries. Because social media makes you believe that everybody is cool, everybody is nice. It's not true. There's a lot of serial killers on my page. I'll never know because all they do all day is post how wonderful God is. The most horrible human beings I've ever met on social media or in real life are the people that are taught in Bible all day long. Look at Donald Trump. All the man talks about is Jesus Christ and he carries the Bible all over the place. Mr. Alala, they said, well, in my opinion, at that particular time moment, she was in dying need and needed a place. I am not giving excuses for her. Sorry, it's not about excuses. It's about everybody learning. She had a place in a church to stay in. She had a space in a church to stay in. That's why this show is considered choices. Choices. Choices and boundaries. See, even if you needed a place to stay in, there's no reason as far as I'm concerned why you're in the guy's bedroom or, or you're in the guy's bed. You, If you needed a place to stay in, you should have laid on his Nobody has a right to touch a woman or a man for that matter. But don't put yourself. All I'm saying is that people need to start not to put themselves into dangerous situations and dangerous positions and things like that. Because at the end of the day, your life, you only have one life to live. I'd rather offend somebody that means me no ill. I will rather unfriend somebody that means me no ill than make myself pray to somebody that's going to kill me, rape me, or maim me. So I understand that we all have, we need places to stay. Uh, she needed a place to stay. The guy gave her a place. But you, look, it's about choices, choices and boundaries. You have no business in a man that you don't know's bed laying up with him if you don't know the guy. She should, in my opinion, you stay on the couch. Because if we don't take life lessons from the things that happen to other people here, you know, if we don't take life, life lessons from things that happen, you know, you got to start thinking, thank you. Look, Joseph says, Moji, I can't agree with you any less. I can't imagine people still don't think through situations and choices before they act. A lot of choices that we make in life. The choice to be with a particular person, the choice to marry somebody, the choice to have a child. That stuff is like permanent stuff. You know, the choice to marry my ex-husband put me in a whole lot of shiggity. But I own my choices. And that's why when the second time came around and I was ready to date again,
Okay, I had boundaries. I had things that I would not settle for because I've been burnt before. If we don't pay attention to the things that are going on in our lives, to the reasons why we are where we are, if we continue to blame other people, we will not grow. I saw the video of the last guy that was killed in, um, in Atlanta. I sobbed this whole weekend. I was like so emotionally distraught because me, I'm looking at all these people jumping around talking about Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. Yes, they do. All Black Lives Matter. Black women's lives matter. Transgender, Black gen trans lives matter. It's Black people that kill trans. Everybody's lives matters. Black, every Black life matters. The old man who was snuffed, his life mattered. But we have to become more accountable. The other man was stopped. He was drunk as a skunk. We all know that. We saw it. The interaction was very calm, cool, and collected. You know, a lot of things we can get away from. We allow ego and stuff to disturb it. We have to start making choices. As far as I'm concerned, it's not every black, white cop that's, a, that's, that's, that's racist. It's not every cop that's bad. But I'm not going to allow myself to get shot or killed. I want to come home to my wife and kid. I really do. So when a policeman stops me, I put my hands on the counter and I speak to them. I am going to be doing this. I'm reaching out for that, not because I'm retarded or stupid. I probably could pay the guy's salary 10 times over, but I'm reaching out into its authority. He has an authority. The guy is carrying a gun. I want to make it home. I want my son to make it home. I looked on the paper, on the, on the, I looked at the video. I watched the video and I couldn't stop crying because this guy should have made it home. We have to start speaking in truth and talking about making the right choices because the right choice for me at that point would have been, yes, officer, I was drunk. Yes, my wife drove me here. Yes, but I'm not him. I don't know what he was thinking at that moment. And when they tried to put the cuffs on him and he grabbed, there was a scuffle and he grabbed the taser gun. I, in my head, I mean, I was crying watching this thing going, oh my God, this does not have to happen. At some point, we have to start to start to take responsibility and speaking in truth. Nobody deserves to die. Yes, we know that. Nobody deserves to be raped. Yes, we know that. But we all have to start making choices. We have to start thinking things through. Because in that moment when that guy decided to go for the taser gun, everything changed. The whole, everything changed. The whole energy of that space right there changed. It changed because now the police officer is in defense. Now the guy has a taser. Also, the police officer is probably thinking, what if I get shot by the taser and this guy comes after me and takes my gun and shoots me? We don't know what anybody's thinking. Bottom line is we have to be more proactive than reactive. You can make every goddamn excuse you want. You're the one that's not going to make it home. I don't really care what people are saying because at the end of the day, I want my son to come home. I want people to be more responsible for their choices. I want people to start thinking things through. It's, it's time. Black people are running around crying. Oh, my God, it's me. It's me. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Sounds, Olu says she sounds like she was a vulnerable young adult. Yes, she was very vulnerable. She was in a place in her life, and I don't know her, and I'm not making excuses, but choices that we make always affects us. She, was, she had a place in church to stay in. She was living in a particular place. She left that place and moved into a church that has a safe house. Yes, it's not fancy. Yes, you have to share bathrooms. Yes, you probably don't even have a kitchen. You have to go and eat in their kitchen, in their dining room, because that's the way most churches run their shelters. But she chose to go home with this stranger that she's never met. She chose to sleep in his bed. She chose to sh take a shower in his house. We have to start speaking in truth so that people can stay, start to take accountability. We black people want to always point the fingers at everybody else instead of looking at what we have done. What? How did I get here so I can make a choice and a change? How do I do things differently? We can't change the future if we're not ready to, 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 to disturb the present. We can't change the future if we don't change ourselves. Mr. Alala Day says another example is a prostitute who gets home with a stranger she met on the streets or a club. Sure, I don't know. It's a prostitute. That's a job. It's hazards of the job. A prostitute's job is to sleep with strange men, and that was her choice to become a prostitute. Should the guy kill her? No. But is there a, a 60 and more percent chance that a prostitute will be killed by a stranger she met? A lot of people do hookups. There was a story last year that broke my heart on social media. The story was sent to me by somebody that was that was allegedly the girl's cousin when 
they were looking for her and they wanted me to make a post about this young girl in Nigeria that met somebody on social media and they had never met in public. She flew to Abuja to meet him up with the guy in a hotel and the guy chops her up. Choices, choices. We have to start to make better choices in life. We, you know, the, the best choices are not the easiest ones, folks. The best choices are not the easiest ones. For instance, let's take this, this example. If I, I am a realtor, I know that it, for me to do good business next month or next year before COVID, I have to go out there and I have to give her my business card in the winter months so that I can do good business in the spring and the summer. Most of my friends will stay home because it's cold. I have had months where I didn't go out in the winter months because it's too cold, but I suffered when springtime came. My inventory was very low. I didn't have a lot of listings. So I learned from that to pay the price. Life lessons don't come cheap. Nothing in life is free. So, but the choices we make will always, always help us. And it's hard. It's hard. It's, it's very hard. Life is hard. And the people that make the right, that make the hard choices are the ones that survive through it. Because if I get stopped by police, instead of running, if they're running and getting shot, how about you stand still, get the, at least if, if they arrest you today, hopefully you'll have a chance because there's been many cases where people have been arrested and then they go to jail and shoot themselves in the back of their head, allegedly committing suicide. But your chances of making a home is higher. Choices and boundaries. Choices and boundaries. Yes, Olu, she's just a child. How do we know she's able to make those choices? Something does not add up sad. She's just a child. We don't know what she's able to do, but what we know is what she did. We don't know what she's able to do. All we know is what she did. How can other people learn from these things? Mr. Ojekere says, who knows? Maybe she was on drugs. True, she might have been on drugs. I'm not sure what she was on. But the bottom line is that I don't know what she did or how she did. But I can tell you for a moment, Mr. Ojekere, if you'd like to come in, I'm going to post the, the, the link on here so I could hear your voice and we could speak about this. Please feel free to join in. I just posted the link to come into the back end of the show. Because it's not just my voice that's important here. It's about teaching our children, our young adults, how to go forward in life and make those choices that might seem hard to you and because it's not the popular because when i sit here and i tell young women you know don't go out with a guy because you're hungry they're like oh auntie moji you're so old yes i'm 55 years old but i've seen a lot there's absolutely no reason in the world why you're going on with a stranger as a young woman you don't know who's who you don't know if it's jeffrey Dahmer. you don't know if he's a serial killer or a serial rapist yes you need a place to stay in her case, in Oluwa Tony's case, she had a shelter that was already awarded to her by a church. And I'm not saying it's her fault because I don't know if she was on drugs or not on drugs, but we have to start taking life lessons from, or this is called authentic conversations for a reason. This is called authentic conversations because we're going to talk about the ish that people don't want to talk about. We're going to talk about the choices and the things that we do because at the end of the day, you know, it's, we have to understand that the choices we make is how we get here. It's easier to do 419. It's easier to cheat. It's easier to be crazy and leave La Viva Loca when you're younger. A lot of women date men that are married by choice. And then they get upset when the guy doesn't leave his wife. Choices. Choices. We have to start making choices and understand to make sure that we have boundaries ourselves, around ourselves. Nigeria, especially when we talk about the Nigerian people, Niger a lot, a lot of Nigerians, anybody that wants to come on, click on the link and then you can come into the back studio and I'll bring you to the, to the screen. Because at the end of the day, if we're not learning from each other's mistakes, if we're not learning from the things that are happening around us, the world is not going to get better. It's just absolutely impossible because we keep talking about things that don't make sense. You know, Luke Joseph says, I must let you know that I was once kidnapped and right there in the jungle, I realized that a lot of this evil guys looks innocent and quote the Bible, thank you. But the venom in them is worse than snakes. If someone chooses to go home or do hookups, you never met. It's their fault, not woe that with any woe that comes with it. I hear you, but people, when you said you were kidnapped, 
click on the link, look, and come into the studio. When you said you were kidnapped, look, were you where were you kidnapped? What were you doing? It doesn't even matter. People should not be kidnapped. But we can't walk around believing that everybody is Jesus Christ because they talk about the Bible. We can't walk around. Half of the problems that we've had in this world have been people that are that are uh, 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 really that are talking ish. You know, he said, I watched, Luke also said, I watched the video. The young man should have simply complied with the police officer. Thank you. I wish more people would speak the truth because I look all over and everybody's jumping all around. Like, this is why we burn ish. No, how about you teach people to respect authority? How about you train people? You talk to people. And I understand that black Americans have a lot of trauma. They've been through so much. It's time that we start seeing, stop singing this, I'm a victim mentality thing where everybody thinks every black, you know, most black Americans think they're victims and they've been taught that they're victims. And we continue to align with the victim mentality. Teach children to be respectful because all this shit comes starts from the house. When you're talking to your son and he's mouthing off at you and you allow your children to call people by their first names and you allow your children, your sons to rule the house or you treat them like babies, like they don't have common sense and they cannot think for themselves. That's how all these things start. I was watching a video about the new Black Panther. And the new Black Panther, I'm going to post the link on this in a few minutes. I was watching a, a video about the new Black Panther and watching what they were saying. And, you know, the commander calls all of them um um comrades or whatever well you know soldiers all young black men and they talk we're talking about inclusion and diversity in 27 2020 and these guys the young black men are standing in line they had a formation going and they tell them to stand still and they're all fidgeting they can't even stand still for five minutes and that's the future of america black america we continue to make excuses instead of sitting up and saying hey what can we do differently what can we teach our young men? How can we get our young people, black people to become confident no matter what is going on around them? Choices. How can we get our young black people to go to school and get educated and become lawyers and become doctors and push themselves? Choices. How can we teach our black men that never grew up with black fathers in their homes? How, that never had role models of what it is to be a black person, a black man. That I've never seen a successful black man, never been to dinner with black successful people. How do we change the narrative? But no, we want to sit around and complain and whine and bitch about how the world, black lives matter. Does black lives matter to us? If black lives matter, we should be doing something to change the system. We should be doing something to uplift black people. We should be doing something to empower black people. We have to do more. We are waiting for white people to do for us what we should be doing for ourselves. Yes, there's 70% black people in um, white people in America. We blacks are only 13%. But damn, we spend so much money and the white community put together. Stop buying things, choices. Choices, stop buying things in shops you know supports Trump. Stop buying things in shops like Chick-fil-A's that doesn't support the LGBTQ community. We, my family, as small as we are, and our money probably won't make a dent in the economy, but we chose not to eat their Chick-fil-A. I heard it's super delicious. I've never tasted it. Those are choices. Those are having boundaries. That is what it calls to have integrity. You can't sit around talking ish about Target, Target, Target. Target gave money to Trump. Target this, tar but you're shopping at Target. God forbid they tell black people don't go to Walmart. They'll be the first people to line up there. But yeah, you want to tell me Black Lives Matters. You want to tell me Black Lives Matter so much that you're willing to kill or allow black people to be killed in a riot because it makes you cool because on social media you sound super fantastically intelligent black lives matter to the point where they killed a 72 year old retired fireman trying to protect his friend's sh shop black owned shop all black lives have to matter choices is what i'm talking about choices choices and boundaries choices and boundaries this girl was killed by a black person. She wasn't killed by a crazy white man. 
She was killed by a black person. My five friend, Saina was son, was walking down the block in AC and he was shot. Nobody marched. Nobody burned shit down. But Black Lives Matter. Are we only concerned about black lives that are shot by the police? Or are we going to, or by white racist police? Or are we going to try and change the system? Are we going to try and change ourselves? Nigerians are complaining. Nigerians are complaining right now, today. Because cops are shooting people. Nigerian police is shooting people. But Nigerians are marching about Black Lives Matter. Is it only Black American lives that matter? All Black lives must matter. We can no longer do the things that we're doing. We can no longer be complacent. We can no longer sit around doing jack. Nigeria at one point was the richest country in the world. In, in, the, in the world, in, in Africa. We have oil, we have gold, we have this, we have cocoa. Cocoa is what they used to make coffee, chocolate, hot chocolate. Cocoa goes into a lot of things, lotion, everything. We have it. We were, we were, we were sending that stuff out like nothing. We had oil. We, now everybody has oil. Black lives have to matter. All black lives have to matter. It cannot just be black male lives. Misogyny and patriarchy has destroyed the black community. Choices. Choices and boundaries. Choices and boundaries. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about black people that are successful getting up and doing things and helping the community. We're talking about black people that are lawyers helping to change the, 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 the uh, petitioning for the laws to be changed. We're talking about black doctors letting people in the project see them, you know, visibility, so people understand. Kevin White says, can we please, please end the myth that black people are doing nothing about violence in the com com community? Several things, most crime is interracial. interracial. There is no more black on black crime there than there is white. Secondly, every black, everyday black groups, black communities all over the country try to stop the violence in their communities. You don't hear about it because it's not covered. Then let's all get together and put together a radio station. Let's get a station and start putting that stuff out there. Because look, the moment we give the white people the power, the white racist system, the power to feed us information, we have a problem. Kevin, let's buy radio stations and start putting information there. Let's stop doing this thing where we're sharing information that nobody knows. Let's, that's not vetted, that's not verified. Let's start doing something proactive and not just be reactive because how many people should die before we wake up and start creating, do, making choices that make sense? How many black people are, go, are going to be killed? And I'm sorry I'm yelling. I'm a, I'm a Nigerian woman. I get When I get, I'm passionate about something, I, my voice goes up. I'm trying to work on it. I really apologize for yelling. I can't help myself. <laughs> Wusa. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of the war if it's me mentality. I am so tired of the war. Oh, my God. It's a system. It's a government. It's a this. In Nigeria, we blame the government, but we put them there. In America, you're only 13%. In Nigeria, we're all black. It's black on black. It's black on black. When it's time to vote, Nigerians sell their votes in Nigeria for 5,000 5, naira. It doesn't even feed them for a week. Yes, you're going to give me the... Somebody's going to come here and tell me, oh, it's because of poverty, honey. I'd rather starve today if I know I have a better tomorrow. If we don't start changing our mentality and our mindset, we need to get away from this victim mentality and start talking about choices, oh. Because a lot of us have been jacked because of the choices we make in life. But then some of us are lucky enough to make the choices to repair our lives, to, re to become a better person, to do things better. People go to parties, and if I don't know you well enough, I'm not showing up at your house. Most of the time, our kids, our sons, well, I don't even think our sons ever done had a sleepover. Those are choices that you make, not because it's the best choice, but because, hey, boundaries. Boundaries. Most rapes that happen in the African homes in black African American homes are rapes that happen in 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 your within your sphere. It's always people that you know. It's not strangers. Very rarely, I mean, there's crimes that are committed by people just running, you know, amok. But most rapes happen from people that we know. Choices and boundaries. That's the most important things. Choice to me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any answers. But for me and my in, in our home. 
choices and boundaries. That's what we're teaching our children. And part of the problem is that we don't allow our children to fall because when you don't allow your child to fall, he doesn't understand that sometimes there's a landmine somewhere. When he goes out the next time, he's not able to recognize the landmine because you've never allowed him to learn the life lessons that he needs to learn to be able to make it in this world. Life is not easy. Khadija, uh, uh, Khadija says the fundamental problem here is not knowing our self-worth. We think there is free meal. Oh, I hear you. We think there's a free meal. Well, America kind of makes life very, very easy for people. They do. America will tell you, go on welfare. You can go on welfare, but you can't make past this amount. So people on welfare are not motivated to do better. In the UK, they have free health, health in the UK, in Canada. In America, we don't have that. We pay for our health care. And for those that don't have, they have Medicaid, but it's not the same quality. The quality changes. So you'll think that more people will be motivated to get a job and do whatever it is that they can do. I'm not talking to people, about people that are ill. I'm not talking about people that have mental illness. I'm not talking about people that have permanent disability. I'm not talking about that stuff. Those people, they need that help. But in America, we have there's so many systematic uh, uh, things that are put, in, put into the system just to hold black people down. But instead of black people saying, hey, we, we, we can do better. We continue to make those all these excuses, excuses, the same excuses they're making in Nigeria, they're making in America. The same damn excuses. Black people are ruling Nigeria. And they're raping Nigerians. I watched a video a few days ago of young men in Abuja. I was going to send it to you today, Alaja. Send it to your inbox so we can talk about that. Lamborghini, name the car. In a country where people cannot find three square meals, all the politi all the kids, about 15 or 17 of them, they were all children of politicians. None of these kids had a job. Not a single one. And yet we continue to blame, point the fingers, instead of becoming accountable for... It's exhausting. Look, Joseph says, talking about my kidnap, I was a victim of circumstance. I was heading to work. Back then, I was working at Chevron as a nurse in Escravos. I got to park late, and I didn't get a car to worry. Delta State, Nigeria. That's a very dangerous area. I hear a lot, a lot, a lot of things are happening there. So she says, or he says, I decided to, to look for an Aquada to take me to Hotel in Asaba, a place I'd never been. Rather than the than being the help, the Okada guy sensed I was a novice in the environment and used it against me. But guys, what Moji, I gave 100% cooperation and God saved me from, but a lot happened, I can't tell. I am sorry for what you went through and thank you so much for sharing your story, it's very powerful. Very powerful story. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry for your kidnap. I have heard horrible stories about kidnaps in Nigeria. There's a very famous woman, Ibru. I forget her first name. She's an actress. She's a politician. She's a, her father owned Hebrew fish. Filthy rich. We're talking about billionaires in Nigerian terms. And she was living in a fancy hoity-toity house. Very nice, beautiful mansion. I don't know what happened, but thieves came in. She was raped. She was beaten up. The security guard was killed. That's Nigeria. Black people own Nigeria. Black people live in Nigeria. Luke says, I don't know if you're a man or woman. She was kidnapped, or he was kidnapped, or she was kidnapped. But she cooperated. She did what they asked her to do, or him to do. And pretty much it was a horror show, but she made it alive, which is what I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. Thank you so much, Luke, for sharing your story. Because at the end of the day, it's about making it home intact. At the end of the day, it's about my son coming home, your son coming home. At the end of the day, it's about your husband coming home intact. All black lives should matter, must always matter. But how are we going to change the system? How do we change the system? We change the system by changing ourselves. We change the system by becoming more educated. We change the system, and believe you me, when I say change the system by becoming more educated, it doesn't mean that they let you in because only diversity does not mean inclusion. I was on a lot of boards in Staten Island and I was not included in a lot of things they did. 
I, Moji, sat on the board of governors of Staten Island Board of Realtors. Most of those people did not invite me to their homes. They didn't invite me to their parties. I was not included in Jack. But I made sure my voice was heard. The little bit of change that I could make created a, 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 a domino effect for the people that came after me. Even if it's a tiny little dent that one person can make by getting themselves at the boardroom, into the boardroom, that's a way, it will create a wave of change. Our choices have to be made. We have to start thinking things through. We have to start thinking more past today, tomorrow. We have to start thinking about four years. It's like a business plan. Our lives have to be more like a business plan. Six months from now, where do you see yourself? Six months from then, where do you see? Five years from now, where do you want to be? Because the work we do today will affect our lives tomorrow. And no matter how much people want to make excuses and this meant, I'm not, I, I just can't do it. I can't do the war is me, slavery mentality. Yes, it's there. We know it's there. We know the abuse is there. We know women have been raped. We know a lot of things. What can we do to change what we can change today while we're waiting for the systematic racism to be changed? What is it that we can do? I don't have any answer. I don't have all the answers. I don't even have any answer. But we all have to start talking about things we can change. We all have to start talking to our sons and our daughters to become respective of authority, and that starts from inside our home. We have to start to tell our children, look, there's slavery, but honey, there's systematic racism, but look, you can be anything you want to be. You can do anything you want to do. Then go out to Google and find a black man that's a CEO of whatever. Go out to Google and find a black woman that's doing whatever it is that your child wants to do. Stop waiting for the white people to come and create a program to help us out. This weekend was a very emotional weekend for me because not only did I hear about this young girl that died and she didn't have to, it kind of made me wonder what kind of world are we living in where a person is in trouble and she didn't even have friends that she could call, that she had to go on Twitter and be tweeting her experience instead of picking up the phone and calling a friend. And with that's far removed from reality, that something so horrible happened to this young girl and she could not find a single person to call. That she had to go on Twitter and tweet it. It makes me, I'm very afraid of the world these days and I must admit I am. Because we've become so consumed by being popular, by followers, by how many people are watching our videos. Instead of what message are we putting out? What message are we putting out there? We talk about we have to become more um, aware, socially conscious. Are you being socially conscious if you're not your brother's keeper? Are you truly a Christian where, or a Muslim or a religious person? Do you even believe in God if you're not helping all your, your fellow human? How horrible a world is this that a girl gets raped and she could not find a single person to call and say, hey, this happened to me. That she had to post it on Twitter. And then because she posted it on Twitter, of course, people were trying to help, but it was too late. Choices and boundaries. How do you pick your friends? How do you pick your friends? How do you pick the people around you? Think about it. Choices and chances. A lot of us begin because we know we've been talking to, I've been talking to Olu. Olu's been on my page for a while now. I don't know her. I only know what she posted. I don't even know her real name. From what she posted on social media is what why I say we're friends. In the past six months though, we've started to speak on the phone. That's how you build a friendship, choices and boundaries. You must take this thing off social media. You have to take your friendship off social media to become real. Because people are as fake. I'd say people are fake. Some people do fake book. I do real book. But everybody does not do real book. 
It's not everybody that sits here and tells you how they jacked up in life, how they made a mistake, and this is where they went wrong. Choices and boundaries. How do you choose the people around you? How do you choose your friends? How do you choose what you're studying in school? How do you choose what country you're going to? Because a lot of people in Nigeria, all they hear is, oh, if you go abroad, you're going to become successful. They don't ask how. What do you do? How do you do it? In America right now, if you don't have your papers, you're jacked. You are absolutely jacked. Unless you have a plan. But people will get on the dinghy that's going to Libya. They'll get raped. They'll almost die. Some will die. To get to America. The same America that Americans are screaming. Black lives matter. They're killing us. They're not giving us opportunities. People are willing to die to come to from Nigeria. Instead of us Nigerians trying to fix our country, choices and boundaries. We're all running away from the country. I didn't run away from there because I came here at a very young age. My father sent me here, I was in my teens. I had no choice. But now I have a choice to go back and Nigeria now says I'm a criminal because I'm gay. So I chose not to go back to Nigeria. I chose to stay in America. Choices and what? Boundaries. And I interacted with a lot of Nigerians and they jacked me a lot. They were as fake, a lot of them were as fake as psh, a $10, a uh, uh, $1,000 bill. So now I choose to put boundaries around myself. I choose to be your Facebook friend. If I choose to engage with you, it's because I want to be your friend. See, there's, you have to understand there's a difference between being a Facebook friend and being a real friend. I have a lot of Facebook friends, but they're not friends. I had to break that down to a woman on my page one day. And the, even the woman has been to my house. But I realized one day, I woke up one day and realized she's not my friend. And I chose to engage with her as a Facebook friend, which means whatever we do on Facebook, it stays on Facebook. We have to start to understand that we have to put boundaries ourselves, around ourselves. And we have to truly start to make choices so that our today can be better than our tomorrow. And look, thank you for answering my question. He says, I am a man but I had relocated outside the country. If I have the opportunity, we'll be willing to share with you. That'll be great. I'll inbox you and we can talk. Maybe we'll do a show about your kidnapping. Talking about my stuff helps me heal, honestly. You know, Mr. Olalade or Jekere says, a lot has died on that journey that will never be accounted for. Shukur to you, sir. A lot has died on that journey. That will never be accounted for. I wish I knew what you meant. Can you expand on that a little bit for me, Mr. Lalade? I really appreciate that because that, that's really deep. And I don't want to spend the whole week thinking about what you said. I, I ran into something very profound yesterday. Um, please share the video. It's important for people to hear this. See, I what is said, I think he said something about politics. Oh, the politics of do or die. I repeat, the politics of do or die is never really true. And it doesn't come out well. Because you can never be sure who will do and who will die. <gasps> I forget who said it. I was watching a movie and the guy said it. And I almost fainted because, oh my God, that's exactly what we're going through right now in America. All over the world, people are shouting Black Lives Matter, burn the shit down, burn the shit down. So after thinking about burn the shit down, burn the shit down all weekend that I've been watching, yeah? And I flip on the, the uh, I think it was, on, it was a movie that came on, on my phone on Netflix. Because I, I, I hardly watch TV. So the movie came on and it was about politics and things like that in Nigeria. And then the man, the, one of the actors in the movie said something about the politics of do and die sometimes doesn't end well because you never can guarantee who is going to do and who is going to die. I was like, whoa, the politics of do, and, do or die never ends well because you never know who's going to do and who's going to die. That was such a deep thing, you know? Mr. Oladile Oje Kere says, a lot has died on that journey that will never be accounted for. So I'm still waiting for him. The Nigerians 
traveling to Europe for a better life. Yes, that journey is died, though. Because a lot of too many people, sir, have died along the way trying to make it here. It's time we fix our own country and stop blaming the white man for colonizing us. It's time we, because when the white man was there in Nigeria, I grew up in Nigeria when the white man, when we were colonized. Actually, I was born in 1964, so I was only four years old. But I remember in Nigeria, when the white people gave over Nigeria to us, we had running water in our toilets. We had, uh, everything was working. We had roads, we had this, we had everything. Crime was low. The, the Nigerian Naira was very, very, it, it, it carried its own weight. It was two to one dollar. Now, one, one dollar is 375 Naira. We have to stop making excuses about life and start making choices because nobody's going to give you anything. And you can, you can go and fight for it and kill people and burn the shit down. Most people that are burning shit down don't own shit. The white people burning shit down in black neighborhoods don't live in black neighborhoods. So they're not burning shit down in their neighborhoods. They're burning it down in yours. And the black people that are jumping up and down, clapping, go and burn shit down. They don't live in the neighborhoods where shit has been doing burned down. And it's not their shit that's been burnt. Maybe it's time that we all start to get some shit. Maybe it's time we start to make choices that are long-term. Instead of being reactive, we start to make plans. We start to raise our sons and daughters to understand that they are human beings, they are people. We start to show them their worth by being home instead of working 10 jobs so we can buy Lamborghini Contashes. I went to a project yesterday. There was a guy that, was, that owned a Range Rover living in a goddamn project. You live in the project, you're driving a Range Rover. It's time to retrain our people. It's trying to, to make them understand that looking good is not the same thing as being good. It's time to understand that when somebody says to you, what does your portfolio look like? They're not talking about you Louis Vuitton suitcases. They're talking about the choices you made to sacrifice to have savings, to have a 401k, to be able to pay for your child's education, to be able to redirect your child's footing. We're not talking about, we're talking about human rights, yes, but we're talking about being proactive, choices and boundaries. We're talking about people stop doing stupid shit. You're living in the project, you're riding in Range Rover, why? Yes, Americans will tell me because they have a right to. But then don't complain when you get treated like garbage. Because you already know systematic racism is here. What are you going to do to protect yourself the best way possible? Choices and boundaries. I told our son one day, I said, you're a 16 year old, good looking black man. A lot of white young girls in your circle are going to like you. Do not, I repeat, do not, do not engage in a manner that any woman will tell you or scream and the white girl who came on to you is now saying, oh, you raped her. That's the reality of the life we live in. And some people will say, oh my God, Muji, how could you do that? I see it every day in my walk. I have clients that call me and don't understand because the lines are blurred. You have to protect yourself so you can make it home. You have to make choices that might be hard, that might not be popular, that might not be make you look like a hero what you want to do is get home what you want to do is have a better future what you want to do is pay the price today so that tomorrow your tomorrow is better than your today if you spend money yafun yafun and you think you'll have something to pass on to your children if you don't have life insurance and you can't leave jack to your kids choices because you're going to have to pay that monthly note if you don't have buy health insurance, when you know you could get sick any goddamn day because you want to look good and wear polo shirts and Ralph Lauren and this and that. Choices. You can't blame the white man for everything. You can't blame your mother for everything. You can't blame society for everything. You can't blame Nigeria for everything. You can't blame Jamaica for everything. Because at some point in our lives, we have all had to make choices. But with the choices we make cannot no longer be about instant gratification. It has to be long term. The choices we make can no longer be a bandage on our wounds. The choices we make can no longer be about that. I plugged in, I'm about to go, but I plugged in the link to the show. If somebody wants to come in, you're more than welcome to.
because my voice is, it's called conversations with Moji, <laughs> not a lecture of Moji. Paco Don says it's a choice to drive a Range Rover in the projects. Orientation and the exposure might not be right to you, but I might just fulfill his life. Shukut to him. I do agree with you and don't understand it, but I stop judging people by my own standards. I totally get it. If you had been on the show a little bit earlier, you would, you would have heard me when I said that people, we have to start exposing people, visibility. Because look, when you're living in the projects, and I worked a lot in the project, I've moved a lot of, lot of people out of projects and things like that. And it's very important. What, what I found to be very important, one of my biggest things in life is visibility. And I say visibility because look, Paco Don, you're a movie maker, you own a production company, you're doing your own thing, you're doing very well, whatever, should go to you. There's a lot of kids in the projects and in Nigeria that don't know that people are able to, black people can do this. That's where visibility comes in. That's why people that make it need to go back and reach out and allow themselves to be seen by other people so that they know that the possibilities are there. I spoke about that earlier. I'm not judging people, but then you can't complain. You know, my thing is don't complain by the choices you make. But the choices we make is based on what we know and where we are. That's why it's important to become educated. Education is not just in books. Education is being, I, I followed Oprah, I followed so many people, I didn't even know why, but I just love their aura. I love the fact that a black woman could command the attention of so many, many white people. So I followed her for many, many years. I loved Barbara Walters. I'm not doing anything close to what those two women are doing, but I'm doing my own little bit to change the world in my own small circle. When I decided to come out, choice, I made a choice to come out of the closet. Because I thought I heard, or I heard God telling me that I needed to come out and be a light for other people. When I chose to come out, people slaughtered me. It was my choice to come out. But then when I started getting inboxes and letters from people, Nigerians all over the world saying, oh my God, I've never met a Nigerian gay woman. This was 10, 15 years, 10, 15 years ago. I chose to stay out with all the pain I've been through. It's choices. Choices, instant gratification of staying in the closet where nobody would know I'm gay and they would leave me alone and they'll be my friend and they will invite me to parties and, you know, I could have done that. That was my choice. But I chose to come out. So when they start throwing stones at me and it hurts too much, I choose to retreat for a little bit and go meditate and pray and fast and do whatever it takes. That's my choice. Everything we do in life comes with a consequence. Every little thing we do in a life comes with a consequence. What I am tired of is pointing fingers at other people, is blaming everybody else. Systematic racism is there, Paco Dan. But I, Moji, want my son to make it home. I, Moji, want my daughter to make it home. I personally want air lovers to come home. So what do we do? We start talking about empowerment. My daughter, our 25 year old daughter is doing her masters. She's soon about to be a vice president of a company. She had to give up a lot to do the masters. Her friends are going to parties, choices. Those are the kind of things I'm talking about. You know, when you're doing your masters, you know you have to write a lot, a lot of papers, a lot, a lot of theses. I'm 55 years old. I decided to do inclusion and diversity at Cornell University. I knew I couldn't hang out. I knew I couldn't stay on Facebook and all that stuff. Everything comes with a price. I'm working on a new project right now and I'm not doing as much Facebook live chats, shows that I would like to do, right? Let's be real, it's choices, but we also have to make that we sure have to use our privileges to help other people, to show them the possibilities. Because look, if a child lives in the project and for generations they've been on welfare and this and that, honey, I get it. How do you see? How do you even, people say, look, my dad used to tell me, be be very, very, um, what did he used to say? He used to tell me, be very um, optimistic. Always see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I grew up believing that I couldn't, uh, there's nothing I can't do, I'm a woman. My dad was a, he owns construction companies. He's dead now. He owned, he took me to the job sites. He allowed me to be there. He exposed me to these things. I'm an adult now that owns real estate company. And I also do construction. I do flips and because I was exposed to these things. If we don't start to become proactive in our own communities, we're not 
So anyway, Pacodon says, I totally agree to the part of my goal is to use film to reorientate and expose people so they can make their own choices. Shoot, good to you. Anyway, look, and I'm going to pause for a second. When I say making choices, my choices, the choice I make is not going to be right for Shukra or Jane or John. Your choices should be made. I'm hoping that when people are exposed, then they can make the choices that works for them. You have to come custom make your life because what works for Moji, my purpose is different from yours. Your purpose is different from mine. Paco Don makes movies. I used to be a talent manager. My job in the life of my actors is different from Paco Don's in the life of my actors. So our path is never the same. I just want people to be able to be exposed to the opportunities that are out there. Because when you tell people, go look at the light in the end of the tunnel, sometimes people can't even see the goddamn tunnel. So then how do they see the light? That's all I'm saying. Let me go back to Paco Don's comment, which is I totally agree, uh, totally agree. And part of my goal is to use film to reorientate people, to orientate and expose people so they can make their own choices the right way with consideration to a general goal of their people. Shuku to you. I am glad you came out and ignore the haters. <laughs> it is ignorance and, and indoctrinate culture. They will never, they have never questioned and never even benefited them. I really do not worry about what people think. I'm an atheist and I face all sorts myself. So I do understand. I totally, I, 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 I thank you for your comments. It's very important that people hear that, that um, just be your authentic self, but make choices and create boundaries. Make choices, go search for information. Don't make your choice on how you feel today in the moment, what's going on in the moment. Take a I, one thing I learned to do as I got older, because I, I am very impulsive. Oh, my God. I, mm. But as I got older and I was banging my head all over the place on things, I realized that I needed to start thinking things through. There's nothing. I mean, I would get up and say, oh, I'm going here, and I'll jump on the plane and go or jump in a car and go and do whatever makes me feel great. And I broke my shoulder last, last, um, last I think it was February. Yeah, February 27th last year. Literally shattered my shoulder. Like, let me show you something. It's ridiculously funny. It's not funny. I was playing racquetball. That morning I woke up and I thought, don't go to, don't do racquetball. I mean, don't go to the gym. Stay home, swim. Nah, I'm going to the gym so people can, I can be around people. Play racquetball that I've played since I was 10. I fell and shattered my shoulder, literally. If this is my shoulder, my shoulder, this piece that holds this all together was shattered. Shattered. I have a fake thing holding my shoulders together and a huge gash here. I had a choice for them to do that. Or, and as of right now, I can only go this high. So because I know my arm only goes this high, I'm in physical therapy, the choice to give up an hour of my life to go and work out my shoulder, because originally it was like this, and I couldn't move it. I couldn't even move the wrist. But with physical therapy, which is very painful every day, five days a week, I am now able to go this high with my arm. My other arm goes here. Choices. The choices we make today is going to affect our tomorrow. I want you guys to leave with three things. If you have privilege, choose to share your privilege with others. Allow people to see you. I'm not saying go and get involved in let black people see that <laughs> You too can do it if you're willing to do the work. Before you choose to do anything, think it through. Yes, it's going to feel great. If I eat a whole pound of cake, it's going to be amazing. It's going to taste fantastic. But in less than three, four days, I would have gained weight. So maybe I choose to eat a tiny little piece instead of the whole loaf of cake. Choices. When you meet somebody new, I don't care if you're a man or a woman. I don't care if you're gay, straight, transsexual, transgender, money sexual, green card sexual, doesn't matter. Take the time to know the person. Do not allow your, don't put yourself, don't try and fix a temporary situation by endangering your life. I ask you, please, stop going home with people you don't know. And if you are, a lot other people, someone 
on anybody. Let them know where you're going so that if they can't find you, they know where to go. Black lives, three things, baby. Black lives has to matter. All black lives, women's lives, transgender lives, gay lives, any life has to matter. All black lives must matter. And especially black lives of black people in Nigeria. <laughs> because Nigerians are jumping up and down, black lives matter. In the meantime, they're raping your girls, like you know, in Nigeria. They're killing, destroying places. They're kidnapping people. The government is out of whack. The government is still in Nigerians blind. The government is taking monies that belong to the roads to buy private planes and giving their children cars. There's so much crime and death in Nigeria. There's so many gangs. The school system is jacked up. Choices and boundaries. That was the show. I thank you all for joining in. Remember that we, we as humans, we create our own future. Your choices today determines where you're going tomorrow. Understanding that really, truly, there's going to be problems all over the world, everywhere you go. In Nigeria, there's tribalism. Yorubas don't like Igbos. Igbos don't give Yorubas uh, um, jobs and vice versa, and it's just crazy. It's not just black against white. It's tribes against tribes. It's been there forever. It will always be there. But the goal for me, my prayer every day when I meditate is for us black people to wake up and start making better choices. Because at the end of the, uh, the day, when we give our power to other people, when we hand our power over to other people, and we're not making the choice to stay alive, we're not making the choice to prevent ourselves from uh, as much as we can from racist cops, then I have to ask, does black lives really matter? Or are we just doing all this show so we too can be trending? So we too can sit there and say burn shit, especially people that ain't got shit to burn. <laughs> burn shit. That's why we're burning shit. You're burning shit because you want to burn in shit. You're looting because you're a thief. You're not looting because they killed um, George Floyd. You're looting if it wasn't for all George Floyd's death did for the looters was give them a doorway into stealing that they would steal anyways, because if you're not a thief, you are not going to steal. Looting is stealing. For the people that are burning, I believe in marching, I believe in holding my money and spending it in places where it counts. I will not eat at chick fil -A's because I don't believe it, they should be giving their money to agencies that fight against homosexual rights. I will not deal with certain companies that donate to Donald Trump. That's my power. And when it's time to vote, people, you better step out there into the platform in droves. Yes, they will try to stop you. Yes, they won't make it easy for you to vote. Yes, uh -uh, nobody goes to war and thinks that the other person is going to open the doors to their freedom. You got to take it, but you got to take it make, by making the right choices and putting boundaries around yourselves, in my opinion. If you don't agree, please leave, him, leave me a comment. And if you have a better suggestion, leave the comment. And as for Luke, thank you so much for sharing your story. And I'm going to inbox you. I'm going to interview you over the phone. And God willing, you'll, be, you'll join me on Authentic Conversations with Moji. By the way, on, on, on Wednesday, uh, Khadija is coming back on. She's a commissioner of peace for Kaduna in Nigeria. And she's going to come and talk to us about how to create a better Nigeria. Authentic Conversation is about becoming a better people and creating a better world around us. My name is Moji Solo Wilson. May our tomorrow be better than our today. Namaste. See you guys next Wednesday. Share the video for me, by the way. Like and follow the page. For me, it's not about the numbers. It's about getting the message out.